Oi, 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 YouTube. It is good to see you. I hope that you have had some water today and that you are unclenching your jaw. Today, we are going to be going over the 5.3.0 PTB patch notes. You guys have read a lot of the developer update. This will be giving us some more specifics. So let's dive on. And this is a, a slightly lengthier video, so try to bear with us. Now, uh, one thing I do want to address is they have simply said they added a new survivor, Michaela Reed. And they've updated the character select portraits for several survivors like David, Jake, Nia, Kate, Quentin, and Fang with their new character sort of like faces, right? The problem here is we don't know anything about Michaela Reed. So uh, stay tuned. After this video goes live, there should be a second video that deep dives into Michaela and her perks, okay? So uh, stick with us there. We don't have any more information until this goes live and it is not live currently. Now, let's take a quick look. Um, item and add-on descriptions have been rewritten considerably and other vague terms have been replaced with number values. So no longer in the game will we see uh, considerably or anything like that. We will actually see number values that will help us to better calculate. Um, you know, obviously that stuff has been on the wiki for a while, but that's a good change. Uh, added in reminder text for status effects. Any add-ons that trigger status effects also include a brief description on the status effects. So that's that's good. There's no longer like you're never going to be scratching your head being like, what is what is that? What is oblivious again, bro? What is that, bro? They also changed it so the hatch will now only appear when one survivor is left. So no longer will you be getting three man hatch escapes or something like that. The hatch is literally for the last man standing because it is very likely that when it's you and the killer left, you're probably not making it out of that trial or you have to like sneak to a door, or hope for the best. So the hatch is now just for the final survivor. Um, survivors can open the hatch after it has been kicked shut by using a key. Key interaction takes 2.5 seconds, so it's not instantaneous. You can't do it while you're in the middle of chase. If you're being chased by that killer, you can't just nope. Um, so that'll be, that's interesting. That's good. Um, it does not lose progress when interrupted. So this is not like a totem where if you get off the totem, it resets. It's two points. So you could do like one second here and then the killer walks away and you're like, okay, I'm going to go do another second. And he comes back and you're like, okay. And you leave. So they also changed the achievement. Where did they go to, uh, you know, be current. So, um, developers, they say the hatch change is effectively the much asked for key nerf in disguise, preventing survivors from escaping a trial prematurely. It's also intended to reduce situations where survivors would camp the hatch waiting for their teammates to die. So this balances the game in a multitude of ways. It balances it better for survivor gameplay because at a low to medium level and it's like, oh, there's only two of us left. Well, I'm just going to wait for hatch, right? Like that sucks because you're being chased for 50, 60, 70 seconds, one gen left and the person's not on the gen, right? Simultaneously, this balances it for killer. One thing I've had to tell myself over the years is, oh, if they all escape via hatch, that's not a loss for me. Like they literally just waited it out and then one person used a key and they bailed early. It's not really a loss. They just chose not to do their objectives. Now, this feels much more fair in practice. We're going to move on to the trapper changes. This is a pretty, uh, a pretty good one. Um, this is one we've been asking for forever, actually. So uh, the base trap carrying capacity and starting traps increased to two. So you would previously so start with one trap. You now have two. Trap aura color changed from red to white to be consistent with other killer object auras. So plague pools and bear trap, reverse bear trap, things like that. Um, so honestly, this will make it easier to see, in my opinion, if there's a trap near a gen or something, you have to worry about that blending in. The number of traps spawned on a given map is now always six. It used to be random. That was weird. That was a choice. Um, honestly, the game is five years old. So, you know, five years ago, I'm sure that choice made some sense. Um, being always six is good. And they changed all these add-ons and they gave quite a few updates, um, to a lot of the reworked, uh, add-ons. And these are the, um, you know, slightly changed, right? So, uh, this was uh, trapper glove setting speed increased to 30%. It was 20, right? Um, trap escape modifier removed added effect, 33% increase to rescue and escape time. So it, you know, they, they've changed a lot of these. I want to go down here to, you could read these, of course. Um, the trapper bag was reduced by the way. Uh, so because you start with one, they made it. So the trapper bag is only one additional trap. Um, so if we go to the reworked add-ons, the oily coil, when resetting a bear trap, reveal the aura of the most recent survivor to disarm it for five seconds. So this is interesting. If you find that somebody is just snapping the same trap over and over and over, um, or, or you're assuming it, this may not be bad. 
not not too bad there. Very, I think, inventive, actually. Um, the Trapper Sack. Bear traps are carried at the beginning of the trial instead of spawning on the map. But bear traps cannot be picked up. So this is one of the, like, you set it, and you better hope that that is your three gen for the rest of the damn match. Not a bad idea, but it is very much putting you... It's saving you tons of early game time, but you are going to have to be kind of a big brain trapper. I think Otz is going to really dig on this one and, and like it a lot, so... The bear oil, setting a bear trap is silent. That's interesting. I, I don't know that I'll be seeing too much use out of that. Uh, I feel like if a survivor's watching you, they're watching you. But um, Makeshift wrap, the trapper cannot be caught by his bear traps. The bear trap will be disarmed if the trapper steps on it. So he won't get caught in it, but it will snap. Coffee grinds, gain a 5% haste status effect for 5 seconds after, st uh, after setting a bear trap. That's actually good. And I think that sounds like that'll be like a, like a green... Um, just getting you that early game a little faster, right? Um, lengthen jaws, bear traps inflict deep wound. That's, you know, we, we've kind of already sort of had something like that if they, if they, well, I guess, no, no, we haven't. So this will be interesting. Deep wound, not a bad idea because not only do you go from healthy instantly into deep wound, but you go from injured into deep wound. I actually like that. It's pretty good. Um, and then the following add-ons have been removed. The strong coil, spring, trap setters, logwood die, setting uh, tools, stitch bag. So the logwood die was removed. We do have to remember that the traps were actually made to be silver and darkened a bit not too long ago with some of the visual updates. So uh, keep an eye on that, of course. Um, they say the trapper is DBD's oldest killer and he needed some love to bring him up to our modern standard of play. Many of these changes are focused around bringing him into line with how the rest of our killers behave. Traps have been balanced to provide more consistent game experiences. And his add-ons have been overhauled to give a greater variety of options. I think while starting with an increased trap, I think there's still something to be said about, like, that, in my mind, is still not enough, personally. Um, I think <sighs> Hag is very much a killer that if somebody snaps the trap, like, they have to do it like, oh, you know, uh, I'm going to pop her trap when she's picked somebody up because otherwise she's going to warp to me. And, and I still don't think there's enough of re of a repercussion for people to snap your traps without having to have like add-ons for it. I still think that Trapper needs a little bit of love in that way. But you know, I could be wrong. But I, I think it's too easy for an organized team to still shit completely on Trapper. So I don't think this changes that by much. Uncloaking speed boost for the Wraith has uh, been reduced to one second, was uh, 1.25. So he has a slightly shorter uh, surprise attack is what it's called in game. Um, the add-on, the all-seeing blood, um, all-seeing colon blood colon. Okay, anyway. Aura reveal range decreased to 8 meters was 12. That's good. People said this was overpowered. I don't know that it was inherently overpowered. Um, they say a wee bit overpowered. I think it's slightly overtuned. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Um, so we'll see how this goes. I don't know that Wraith is inherently overpowered per se, but um, I think people throw their pallets too fast against him. Anyway, uh, the hillbilly. All right. Death engravings. Decreases heat generated while charging by 14%. Um decreases heat generated while charging so the the i don't know why this doom engravings is here twice it's probably a typo uh mother's helpers uh charge speed bonus after being stunned increased to 18 was 12 um charge speed bonus uh increased to 25 was 20 so small changes black grease increased chainsaw charge speed by 18 percent for 30 seconds after being blinded Mm, okay. Uh, increased action speed by 20% when breaking pallets or walls or damaging generators. Uh, decreased duration of pallet stuns by 50%. So, uh, honestly, these pig house gloves are insane now. Um, honestly, like, running... like th This almost reminds me of, like, fire up and brutal strength, right? 20%. Um, and then brutal strength and then fire up. Yeah, you have, like, the same wraith build almost. And then pallet stuns by 50. Does this stack with, like, enduring? Do you just basically never take a stun? That's insane. I'm gonna... Okay, pig, pig house gloves. Take a look at this. Um, the nurse gets a add-on. Uh, it is an iridescent. Uh, removed... Uh, hold on. Torn bookmark. Removed the line of strike restric restriction. Added in effect. Increases blink recharge time by 50%. So you have a third blink. Uh, your blinks take longer to recharge. Uh, we have the shape, the memorial flower, rarity decreased to common, vanity mirror, remove the speed penalty, rip, RIP, um, uh, sluggy, sluggy, slow Myers, um, 
Judith's tombstone. Speed penalty now only applies to evil within three. So here's here's my issue with this. We see the shape being changed. They didn't change the tombstone. Like like the insta kill. Like. Like, I don't understand. Like, we've been wanting the shape to be changed so he can't insta worry you for a long time. Like, I, I mean, not to mention his power probably needs a rework, but it's super weird that it's omitted that he just, like, he has an insta more. It's, okay. Anyway, weird. Uh, okay. Anyway, the hag, uh, waterlog shoe increased speed bonus to 4.5% uh, percent was 2%. So she is now much speedier. Um, and they, so yeah, they figured they would just change a knob on that. All right. We got the pig. The pig is the next big one. Um, increased reverse. Uh, so the bag of years increased reverse bear trap setting speed bonus to 50 was 20%. This is insane. You're throwing, you're just slinging traps on people's heads. Now the creative gears decreased jigsaw box search penalty to 33% was 43%. So it's not quite as punishing now. The tamper timer decreased reverse bear traps, death timer modification to 20 seconds. It was 30 <clears throat> so it's pretty good too. Um, decreased rarity to rare. So that was the uh, rule set. Amanda's letter jigsaw box reduction removed aura reveal range increased to 16 meters instead of 12. Uh, the John's medical file increased crouch move speed by 6%. This is actually not bad at all. Um, I think her stealth is kind of a problem when you have to make such a time and oriented trade off, right? Razor wires failing a jigsaw box skill check while uninjured will injure their survivor. So interesting. Um, not bad. Uh, kind of probably won't find much use against decent survivors, but workshop grease increases ambush attack charge speed by 50% decreases ambush attack miss cooldown by 25%. I think this is going to be kind of one of her best add ons now um, being able to charge up your ambush faster and then, you know, once you miss, it's not as punishing. If you miss, right? Like, that's, I think this is going to be the one, right? The last will increases ambush attack movement speed by 6%. So I think these two together, the last will in the workshop grease, oh, clap and booty. Increase time to charge ambush attack by 66%. So I think this will offset by by this. I think I think if you have this charge speed by 50, all right, the charge speed is increased by 16%, right? So I don't know. We'll see. Last will. This is a hefty penalty to pay. Uh, so I'm not sure about this, but we'll see. Failing a jigsaw box. Uh, this is the interlocking razor, which I thought we just talked about uh oh this will inflict the deep wound okay all right cool that's different than the razor wires all right jigsaw's annotated plan increases available reverse bear traps by one increases reverse bear trap death timer by 10 seconds whenever a generator is completed 10 seconds is removed from the death timer of all active reverse bear that's pretty nasty actually uh a gen just being done in 10 seconds is gone off your timer like you're like like searching a box and then the thing <laughs> It just snaps on your head. Uh, okay, Jigsaw Sketch increases available reverse bear traps by one. When a uh, survivor with reverse bear traps working on a generator, that generator's aura is revealed to you. That's not bad at all. A lot of high-level players do this shit um, where they, they're not really like worried about it too much. That'll be interesting. Um, and then the videotape. Survivors begin the trial with reverse bear traps installed. Rarity inc increased to ultra rare. I don't know what this means if all four survivors just have a bear trap immediately. I think that that's actually bad. Because, like, yeah, the map, like, the, the whole match starts with, like, a little bit more pressure on them. I think maybe if you combine the videotape with the jigsaw sketch, like, people may not immediately try to get the, the trap off their head. So they may just do the videotape and the sketch together, right? Um, and if you do that, you know, it's a little bit weird, but... All right, the spirit, while phase walking, survivors within 24 meters of the spirit, not the husk, uh, the spirit, her physical, like, well, I guess her not physical, her uh, non-corporeal body, will hear a directional audio cue uh, that, that gains volume with proximity. So the closer her spirit gets to you, um, so if she's across the map, she starts phase walking, and then her phase walking self gets close to you, you can hear that. So that'll be interesting. I, I want to hear what that sounds like. We'll be doing videos on that. Uh, the Juniper Bonsai increased passive phasing duration by 50%. Um, so this is the passive phasing. The Dried Cherry Blossom survivors trigger killer instinct when they come within four meters of the spirit while she is phasing. Scratch marks are no longer visible while using Yamaoka's Haunting. Eh, it's fine. 
the uh, Wakazashi Saya during Yamaoka's haunting, use the active ability button to return to the husk and end the haunting. This will be interesting. I'm interested in this, right? I, I think you could do something interesting with mind games on this. We'll have to see, though. Uh, Mother's Glasses. Survivors trigger killer instinct when they come within two meters of the husk scratch mark. So this is just an improvement of the uh, sort of other one. Um, instantly, the uh, Uchiwa. Uh, instantly uh, recharges Yamaoka's haunting when stunned by a pallet. Eh, it's not too bad. When Yamaoka's haunting ends, the spirit husk explodes and any vaults within four meters are blocked. Uh, that's interesting. I think you could actually... That's that's really... Okay, there's a lot there. That's okay. Uh, Furin, the phasing sounds heard by all survivors. Not a fan of that. That's going to be like the new... That's like... Eerie Button Legion, which is just annoying. Um, instantly recharges Yamoka's haunting after breaking a pallet or wall. Um, and then the bloody hair brooch, the dirty uh, uwa, uwabaki. I hope I'm saying that right. The Katsumori talisman, prayer beads, bracelet, and father's glasses. New terror radius. Oh, she has new terror radius music. Oh, fuck me running. I'm excited for that. I want to like spirit, bro. I do. Uh, okay. The plague. If the power button is released early, Vile Purge will continue charging to the minimum threshold instead of canceling. This is kind of a big deal. Sad part is you can't unintentionally cancel. Well, I mean, yeah, you can. I'm a liar. Don't listen to me. I'm... Anyway, Vile Purge cooldown move speed increased from 2.3 to 3.6. This is insane. When like when you're using Vile Purge, like I think the cooldown is the worst part. You know, because that that is a very slow moving projectile, and if you miss, you're just basically it feels like you're standing still. Sometimes this is insane. I'm very excited for this. Base object infection time increased to 40 seconds. Eh, that's whatever. Uh, interacting with infected objects generates two times more sickness over time than interacting with non-infected objects. Um, so if you're working on a gen that's infected, you will get sick very quickly, um, which is good because it felt negligible before as, as the killer, like when you're playing as plague, you're like, aha, they touched it and got sick, but it still took like forever. So time to cleanse a fountain increased to eight seconds was six seconds. Uh, that's good. The thing about plague is that like plague by the nature of you playing plague and making people sick, they get free heals. If you M1 them and then you vomit on them and then they go drink, they're in, they're healed, right? It, it, and so giving them really fast heals is, is the counterplay that feels very brutal. Um, so just two additional seconds, like that adds up over time, especially if people have to cleanse three, four times per person, right? Like yeah, it gets pretty crazy. Object infection bonus increased to 20 seconds was five seconds. That's the limestone seal. The emetic poison increased vile purge effectiveness bonus to 30 was 25%. The hematite seal object infection bonus increased to 30 seconds was 10. The infected emetic. Okay, I think you guys could go through all these. There's a lot. I want to go to the reworked add on the prayer tablet fragment. Vile purge no longer affects survivors. Increased object infection duration by 40 seconds. Increases infection from infected objects by 100%. Uh, yeah, okay, that's... I'm not... I don't want to use that. Um, Ola Bainaman says, Survivors who cleanse at fountains have their auras revealed for four seconds. Not bad. I like that one. Prophylactic amulet decreases the number of pools of devotion in the trial by two. Uh, this actually isn't the worst thing. Um, this is a good add-on because what you, in some cases, would want is to force survivors uh, like closer to you. Um, but th this does have the trade-off. If, if survivors cleanse enough they can drain all the pools out. Like once all pools are cleansed in, then they drain. So th this is like a, I'll have to see how this kind of works. Um, incensed ointment, ingesting the corruption at a pool of devotion causes all survivors within the plague's terror radius to scream. I like that. And they've been kind of doing this a little bit more lately. And I, I like that. Uh, increases velocity of vomit projectiles by 10%. That is the vile emetic. We're a fan of that. Holy shit. We still got the death slinger. Must now wait for the enter aim animation to complete before being able to fire. It's 0.4 seconds. So, uh, feels like in my mind, that'll be negligible. Uh, the death slinger must now wait for the exit aim animation to complete before being able to attack 0.6 seconds. So, um, if we think back pyramid head, pyramid head has to wait one second before he can launch his attack and one second before he can come out of it. And pyramid head does just fine. I think slinger will be fine. Um, so, the cooldown when a survivor breaks free is now the same duration as successful hit cooldown. So they reduce the cooldown for when a survivor breaks free um, to counteract that. So if you want to like shoot somebody and deep wound them, e even if they break free, that's good. That's actually smart. Increased terror rates to 32 meters uh, was 24. Um, they reworked the uh, Hellshire iron when a survivor speared gain undetectable. The effect persists for 10 seconds after the survivor is no longer 
speared. And the iridescent coin, decreased range requirement to 12 meters was 15. That's going to be still tough to know exactly where 12 is, but... Um, the ghost face night shroud recovery time decreased to 24 seconds was 30 walleye's matchbook decreased night shroud recovery modifier to two seconds was four. Actually, hold on. I don't want to gloss over this 24 seconds instead of 30 is decent. That's, that's not bad. I, I kind of wish it was just 20 flat. I feel like in my mind that just tickles my brain real good, but, and then the rest of these, the chewed pen, right? Gives, gives. Uh, modification of four seconds. So if you use the chewed pen, it would be 20 seconds total instead of 22. The blight, the adrenaline vial increased rush token charge bonus to one second, uh, increases rushing speed by 10%. So uh, the summoning stone increased pallet blocking range to 16 meters was 12 meters, increased pallet blocking duration to 15 seconds. So uh, significant changes there, I would say to those. Oh my God. All right, we still got... I'm going to try to get through these in like four minutes. All right, let's go. The following perks have become general perks and their names have changed. Babysit, babysitter is now guardian. Camaraderie is kinship. Second wind is renewal. Better together is situational awareness. Fixated is self-aware. Inner strength is now inner healing. All right, we got that. Vigil. Recovery bonus increased to 20, 25, or 30%. Significant changes. They added the broken, exposed, and oblivious to the status effects modified by the perk. The idea is that Vigil recovers these effects faster. Uh, Guardian added a 7% haste effect for the rescued survivor. Remove the killer seeing your aura. Killer aura visibility for you increased to 8 seconds. This is actually really good. Uh, reduce the duration of for the people of broken status effect to... 80, 70, or 60 seconds, uh, so that's good. Increased effective range of windows of opportunity to 32 meters at max, and there is no cooldown. Repressed alliance, generator repair requirement reduced to 45 seconds uh, after, so built to last. This is fucking a weird one, all right? After hiding inside a locker for 14 seconds, 13 seconds, or 12 seconds, with a depleted item, 99% of its charges are refilled. Each use of built to last reduces the amount of charges refilled by 33%. So, what this basically means is you hop in a locker for 12 seconds, you get 99 charges back. You use them all, you hop back in for 12 more seconds, you get 66%. You hop back in for another 12 seconds, 33%. The trade-off here is that you're sitting in a locker for 12 seconds doing jack shit. So, you know, who's the real winner? I'm just trying to keep my flashlights, you know what I'm saying? Uh, any means necessary. Added effect, you can see the auras of drop pallets. This is good. That gives you kind of a directive. You don't have to run empathy or bond anymore to figure out where the shit uh, people might be dropping pallets. No mither grunts of pain reduction increased to 75% and added the effect your recovery speed is increased by 15, 20, 25. I wonder if that stacks with unbreakable. Whew. All right. Surge is now jolt. Pikachu go. Mindbreaker is now fear monger. Cruel limits is now claustrophobia. Insta okay, claustrophobia, chlorophobia. Did we not see a potential confusion coming here? All right, that's fine. Uh, good name, to be fair. It's, it's a good name with cruel limits, right? Locking you in, the, it makes sense. Anyway, Hex Retribution, oblivious condition change to trigger from interacting with any type of totem. Uh, it used to be just Hex totems, but now you're oblivious from touching anything. Uh, increased aura reveal time to 15 seconds. It was 10. Hex Blood Favor, palette blocking effect triggers off basic attacks and special attacks. Woo, this is going to be nasty for Hunter or something the other people uh the third seal hex third seal blindness effect now triggers off basic attacks and special attacks so again same thing you'll be able to proc third seal um you know on huntress or on trickster or something like that survivor penalty now applies to both cleansing and blessing actions uh that's thrill of the hunt uh penalty stacks uh increased to 10 percent per stack uh, maximum penalty increased to 50 percent loud noise notification has been removed annoying uh, I still don't know why I would use Thrill of the Hunt, to be honest with you, but Fearmonger now applies exhausted and blindness to survivors. If a survivor's on the gen uh, with Mindbreaker, they'll have to hop off the gen. I'm going to still call it Mindbreaker, assume me. They have to hop off the gen, wait for the effect to go away to see where their down teammate was. So that's interesting. Good. Interesting. Uh, optimization implemented a status effect preloading system to fix issues of hitches when a status effect is first applied during a match. Currently implemented for Adrenaline, Balanced Landing, No One Escapes Death, Sloppy Butcher, and The Shapes Evil Within. This is important. This is important. Don't fucking skip. If you made it to this far in the video, let me know in the comments below. This is a huge deal if you play on consoles. If you guys have played on consoles, you'll know that Sloppy Butcher, when it applies, your the whole thing, like the whole game is just like, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. It has to like, it seems like it has to call the data and pull up. Oh God, yeah, okay, that's Sloppy Butcher. So now when a, when a match loads in, all of those things are sort of like, sort of backloaded, I think. And so we shouldn't have hitching anymore when Sloppy Butcher is applied. So um, 
keep an eye on this. If you see that this has been fixed, huzzah. If you see that it hasn't, please submit a bug report. Fix an issue that could cause hitches when a survivor's unhooked. Performance optimizations on all survivor items and performance optimization on hex perps. Perp, 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 perp. The map status, Dead Dog Saloon's been re-enabled and we have some totems somewhere in this mess. Totems have been fixed on a varying number of maps. There are some known issues. So just, just look, look at all these. Okay, and that is the end of the video. We will be live on Twitch today, twitch.tv slash DylanKG. We will have a second video out discussing all of the patch notes, and I cannot wait to see you guys over there. I'll be praying to that stinking entity. All right, I gotta get a fucking 25-minute video, man. I'm fucking out of here, bro.